What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at SQL databases in Azure. By now, I think you all know how much I love SQL. I think it's one of the best skills for any data professional to have, but using it in the cloud is a little bit different than using it on your local computer. So in this lesson, we're gonna see how you can use a SQL database in Azure. Without further ado, let's jump onto my screen and take a look. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come right in here into databases under the resources. Now we have a lot of different options in here and there's a ton of different databases that you can choose from and it kind of depends on what your company does. I'm only gonna be showing you the SQL databases but other popular ones are things like using MySQL or PostgreSQL with flexible servers as well as things like Azure Cosmos DB. And they all have different use cases and they all have different ways uh, that they are implemented but by far the most common and one that I've used the most in my career is SQL databases. So let's come right in here and what we need to do is we need to create a SQL database and let's click on create SQL database and let's actually create it and then we'll see how we can use it so what we're going to do is come right down here to subscription we have to select our resource group which you should have already created let's create a database name let's call this Alex the analyst DB for database now we have to select a server but we haven't created a server so we need to create a new server and again i'm going to call this uh, i'll do ata for alex the analyst i'll call this server it looks like this needs to be lowercase let's do ata server and then we'll do uh, yt at the end have to make it unique there we go all right we're overcoming some hurdles here next we have to choose an authentication method we can use the uh, microsoft entra only authentication sql and the entra authentication or just sql authentication now what that means is is if you come in here and set your uh, microsoft entra admin you can set it as yourself and that does help if you're already signed into Azure, you're gonna be using it within Azure. This can be very helpful. It's actually kind of the default uh, method. Let's get out of here. This is the default method. If you come down here though, you can also create an admin login and a password. Both of these have their you know place and sometimes you need to use both. Um, and so just choose the one, the authentication method that you want for that server. For us, I think we're just gonna stick with the uh, Entra admin. We can always change that if we want to. So let's go ahead and we're gonna select ourselves here. We're going to select that and there we go. Let's go ahead and click okay. And that should create our server and there it goes. And now we need to finish creating our SQL database. So do you wanna use a SQL Elastic Pool? If you look at this tooltip right here, basically helps you manage your resources, but we're not gonna be looking at the Elastic Pools. For our workload environment, we're just gonna choose development. Production is gonna be a lot faster because if it's in a production environment, you're gonna want better speed, better compute, all these different things. Development is gonna be a little bit slower. We can also choose a cheaper database or a more budget friendly database. So we don't have to uh, choose what it gives us. We can come in here and we can define this. So maybe you want to have a provision tier instead of serverless, which I don't really recommend. Uh, serverless is uh, quite nice for scalability but we're just gonna keep it as is. But if you wanna come in here and change some of this configuration, you're free to do that. Uh, just don't, you know, if you don't know what it is, I wouldn't mess with it. Well, let's come back to the Create SQL Databases. And then we have our backup storage redundancy. You can either do locally, zone, or geo. We're just gonna stick with our local. Let's go ahead to review and create. It's gonna tell us our cost, which is very, very, very low. Um, if you don't even have the free $200 that they're giving you, which will be, uh, which can be used for this, it's gonna cost you like a dollar uh, for you know what we're gonna be doing, or maybe even like 10 cents, uh, if I'm being honest. Let's go ahead and create this. It's gonna take a little bit of time to set up all these servers and all the databases and all those things. And then once it is done, we'll take a look. All right, so our deployment is complete. You can come in here and look at some of the details. We created SQL databases, the server, SQL server, SQL server. And so all these things are ready to go. Let's go ahead and click on go to resource. And let's exit out of this. All this information is just an overview of our SQL database. Now, we have down here some of the more important things that we're gonna be taking a look at. We're not gonna be diving into all of them because uh, I'm just gonna show you the most common way. Now we have configure access, connect to application, and start developing. Now, in the real world, when people are actually using these SQL databases and when they are getting in here and setting everything up, you can do this in a few different ways. 
One is you can connect to a MySQL database. And this is a very common practice where they connect it to a database management system. It could be MySQL Workbench or a ton of others that are out there. And you can do that by configuring it. And you're going to get some of that information. You're going to plug it in and connect it. What we're going to be looking at is not that option, although uh, that is something that happens often. I'm going to show you Azure's tool for this, and it's going to be Open Azure Data Studio. So we're going to open up Azure Data Studio. We're going to click on this right here. And you're going to need to download the Azure Data Studio. Now, I already have this, so I'm going to come down here and go to Azure Data Studio. And this should resemble a few different things. It should resemble a little bit of Visual Studio Code, and it should resemble something like Microsoft SQL Server. It's kind of a combination of both. You have a search, you have some notebooks that you can use, different projects, an explorer, source control, extensions. It has a ton of stuff. And so this was really popular when I was using Azure. Everybody used this, um, as well as sometimes we connected to MySQL databases or uh, Microsoft SQL Server databases and just use those database management systems. But but oftentimes we would have everything in Azure Data Studio. So let's come right up here. We are going to connect. Now we have to specify our server name. Let's go back really quickly. We're gonna come right over here. We're gonna go back to uh, this right here. We need to select our server. So this is our server. It's ATA Server YT. Uh, we could even come in here into the server and we can just uh, copy this if we want to. But we're gonna get that. We have our server. We have our Windows authentication type. And so it can either be a SQL login, a Windows authentication, but we chose the Microsoft Entra ID. Now right here is recognizing the Analyst Builder at Outlook.com. That was for the course that I have on Analyst Builder for AWS and Azure. We need to add in our Alex, the Analyst at Outlook.com. So let's come in here and we need to sign into our account. So let's go ahead and sign in. And there you go. Your account was added successfully. Let's go back. And there we go, now we're signed in, and we need to select our database. Now it's not popping up the database right away, which should be called like Alex the Analyst DB or something like that. Let's go ahead and try to connect and see what happens. It looks like we're getting an error here. I think, let's actually come back here. Uh, I think our server name is actually this one right here. I just chose the actual server, but this is the connection that we actually need to make. So uh, I'm actually quite certain about that. Let's go ahead and click on this. And now it's saying our connection was denied since deny public network access is set to yes. So this is something I was waiting to see because we need to configure this just a little bit. So let's come over here and we need to go to configure access. So we're going to select configure and it says public network access is disabled, but we can enable this. And then what we can do is we can add in our IP address. So we're going to add in your client IP v4 address. And all we have to do is click save. So now it's going to update and it's going to say, okay, you can access this. Let's not, you know, get too crazy and too wild here. Now we can go back and we're going to select this and we already have that selected. So now, you can see that we have our two databases. We have the master, which is the one that you're gonna get, and then we have the one that we actually created. So all of that to show that you do have to configure a few things, make sure you're doing it properly. And now we can come down here and we can connect to it. And so now, right in here, we can come into our tables. We don't have any tables, but we can come into these tables and views and uh, all of these different things. Now we can actually use this. So now we are connected to our resource. We're connected to our server and we can actually access the databases, create them, do all of our querying, all of our uh, things that we need to do with our data. And we have all these options on the left-hand side. Now this isn't an Azure Data Studio tutorial, uh, but there's tons of stuff that you can do in here. So if you've used something Azure Data Studio, or if you've used Microsoft SQL Server, this should seem really familiar. You should feel right at home. Now, I want you to be able to actually use this. I don't just want this to be something pretty. So I need to show you one other thing that you need to do. Let's go ahead and try to create a table here. Right down here, we have this script, create new table. We can keep it new table just with the one column. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say this is ready to go. Let's go ahead and publish these changes. Then we're gonna come down here and we're going to update our database. 
Now we can come over here and we have a new table. So we can actually uh, open this up. We'll select the top 1000. And of course we don't have any data in it, but uh, we have a working table. So now this table is being stored on a server in a cloud. And this is great. So if you've ever used something like Microsoft SQL Server, you have all these tables and databases and all these things you're working with. That's how it's actually used in the real world, except you'd probably see a ton more tables. You would have access to a bunch of different servers for different clients and different uh, data. So that worked perfect. And what you can now do is let's do control N, just get a new query window available. I'm going to paste in here just like this. Um, we're already selecting our database. We don't have to say use this database go. I'm just, you know, that's what I'm used to. So I'm going to keep it in there uh, for any, you know, if you have a put this in a store procedure or something like that, I don't want it to uh, fail out, but this is just a super simple table. Um, and we're going to go ahead and run this. Looks like that should be done. Let's refresh or actually refresh this table. And we have this product. So let's open this up. And now we have data in here. This are little under uh, underlined in red. Sometimes if you do control, control alt R, it'll refresh it. Or maybe it's control shift R. That's okay. It'll get rid of it eventually. It just doesn't recognize it uh, yet, but it will. Um, so anyways, we have our data in here and now we can write regular queries. And so uh, this isn't a SQL lesson. I'm not going to show you how to write SQL, but I have hundreds of other lessons and courses on how to learn SQL. And so this is uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of how you set everything up. And this is how people actually use it. So this shouldn't be too intimidating if you know how to use MySQL Workbench or Microsoft SQL Server. And so uh, that is really awesome. Now, if we come back here, we're just gonna take a look at a few more things. This is just within our server, but we don't wanna look um, at our server. We wanna go back to our database. So we're within our SQL database right here. We already looked at a little bit of configuration and Azure Data Studio. Again, remember, if you need to uh, connect it to MySQL or something like that. Now, just within the SQL database, there are a few other things that you can do. One, they have something called a query editor um, where you can come in here and you can query off of, let's say uh, you have tables, you can query off of in here. I can assure you that almost nobody ever uses this almost ever. Uh, this is not really something that people use. It's there to kind of test connections sometimes. So if you're just setting up a new server or a new, so if you're just setting up a new server or a new database or whatever it is, you can kind of check to make sure it's working, but you won't use this in your real work. Uh, it's just not, doesn't make sense. Now let's come over here and take a look at this left-hand side. There are some interesting things that I want to show you. One is this power platform. When you start working with a large amount of data, you have a server and a database set up and you're using it and you have tons of real data in there. You're like, okay, now it's time to connect this. Well, you can use things like Power BI. Power Apps and Power Automate. All these things just kind of automatically integrate into it. There's also integrations, but just knowing how you know these are actually used, you most likely won't use them, but just knowing kind of what these are and how they work, you most likely won't use these too much. For people like you and I, Power BI is something that we'll probably use quite a bit. And we most likely won't use monitoring too much, but I will say I've had to come into the monitoring quite a bit over my years to debug a bunch of stuff. So if a store procedure is failing, if the database is failing and you know you need to figure it out, you can come into the logs. If you need to see how much compute, how many resources you're using, you can look at the metrics. So there are some reasons to come in here. Typically though, this is more IT related. This isn't as much of what a data analyst will typically do unless you work, like I said, in IT, uh, where they monitor a lot of those things to keep costs down and keep things running and you know going smoothly. So I hope that that was helpful. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have not already, be sure to check out my full AWS and Azure course on AnalystBuilder.com. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below. I will see you in the next video.